Why was it that Imran Khan, voice of Kashmir, was trending worldwide yesterday? What made this guy French kiss his TV screen? <laughs> and what caused Modi to have an emergency lie down? Well, it was mainly the speech that was delivered by Imran Khan yesterday at the United Nations, where he spoke on four things climate change, debt and taxes, Islamophobia, Kashmir. Smile to Jenna. <laughs> Asalaamu Alaikum guys and welcome to another episode of Smile to Jenna. Alright guys so here are eight moments that stood out for me. Now before we even begin from the Muslim leaders that I saw, he was the only one that started off with a Quran verse which translates to be Thee alone we worship and Thee alone we ask for help. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. That's worthy of respect in itself. All right, number one, Imran Khan made a belter of a comment on the hijab. A woman can take off her clothes in countries, but she can't put on more clothes. How is this happening? Because of Islamophobia. Even if we look at the week that we've had, we had the whole issue with French Montana and his album cover where he was sexualizing niqabis. Then you had a 12 year old who was asked to remove her hijab by Air Canada. And then you had France reigniting the whole hijab issue because let's face it, they got nothing better to do. All right, let's move on to number two. He commented on tax havens. Now you got countries like the UK who are leading in corporate tax avoidance. And you know what? A lot of leaders consider it unwise to cheese off the elite because it'll affect the longevity of their presidency. I never understand why. Why do we have these tax havens? Why is this allowed? Why shouldn't rich people pay taxes? Why is it legal to save, have these tax havens where you have these secret accounts? Number three, seen as it was the day of Jumu'ah, the holy day for Muslims on Friday, I think Imran Khan was jacked up by the khutbah so we decided to give a khutbah of his own and you know what's amazing is his khutbah is probably the most powerful khutbah that was given on the day because he gave it to the world leaders on a world stage. Some of us were just preaching to the preached but the fact that he was able to do it at a stage that matters more so, come on mate, respect and this guy went in. What is radical Islam? There is only one Islam. The Holy Quran is the book of guidance for Muslims and the Prophet's life was living the Quran. He was an example of what the Quran guided us to be. In Medina, it was the first time a welfare state was set up. Something happened in a Muslim world which hasn't happened in any other civilization. Slave dynasties appeared, slaves became kings. The Mamluks, that the fourth Khalifa, the head of state of Medina, he lost a case, a court case against a Jewish citizen. Number one, it showed there was a rule of law. No one was above law. Number four, he managed to roast India in the most lethal way possible and still came out looking good at the end. Almost the entire campaign of Mr. Modi in the election was how he had taught Pakistan a lesson that they had jets had killed 350 terrorists. Complete lie, they had just killed about 10 trees of ours, which was quite painful given that, you know, we are growing all these trees. <laughs> Number five, now this was one of my favorites, a brilliant analogy where he's showing that had there been animals of that number in Kashmir, there would have been a greater outrage on the planet. That what sort of a mindset would lay siege to 8 million people with 900,000 troops locked in as animals? If 8 million animals were locked in, the RSPCA would have made a lot of noise about it. These are human beings. Number six, another uppercut by Imran Khan showing that India is clearly not even giving enough thought to their own lies. And guess what India will blame us? They're already blaming us. They're saying this all this is happening because of Pakistan. One of their uh, 
Defense minister said there are 500 terrorists lined up on the border to go in. Why would Pakistan send 500 terrorists when there are 900,000 troops? There? What impact are they going to make? What will they do? And why would? Don't we know that the moment there is some terrorist attack, all that will happen is there'll be further cruelty and oppression of the people of Kashmir. We will just give the 900,000 troops to further crush the people of Kashmir. Number seven. Now this was the highlight of the entire speech. He told the world leaders that despite Pakistan being a small country, if they were pushed, they would fight till the end. Supposing a country seven times smaller than its neighbor is faced with the choice. Either you surrender or you fight for your freedom till death. What will we do? And my belief is, la la illa, there is no God but one. And we will fight. And when, and when, and when, and lastly, number eight, reminding the UN, you know what guys, this was an article that was forwarded by you lot. So don't forget your role in the whole thing. You've got to, this is a test for the United Nations. You are the one who guaranteed the people of Kashmir the right of self-determination. They are suffering because of that. Let me know in the comments what your favorite bit was. Now before I end, a lot of us would love Imran Khan to be also vocal on the Uyghur situation in China, but unfortunately we're not seeing that that much. In one of his recent interviews, he did say that there is talks happening in private because of the unique relationship. I do hope that there is a change in China very soon because no Muslims living in any part of the world are more superior than others. In the sight of Allah, we're all the same other than the good deeds that we do. Love or hate Imran Khan? Guys, let's be realistic. I can't remember the last time I heard somebody speak as charismatically as he did. And you need to give respect and props where it's due. And you know what? Here, it was due. Let's leave it there until next time. Yeah, my job's useless. Follow me. Do 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 do